Earlier this year, I came down with a painful, mysterious, debilitating illness for which there was no cure. The thing is, it was one in a long series of debilitating chronic health issues for 12 years straight. Two years prior, the Lord had called me and fully revealed himself to me in all his magnificent glory and grace and beauty. And I had thought that I had been healing up until that point. And so the rug was sort of ripped out from under me as I found myself unable to live or thrive, just barely surviving again once more. And I felt so confused and lost and hopeless again, wondering why the Lord had allowed this to happen to me. I was spinning out in anxiety and stress again, like I hadn't since before the Lord revealed himself to me and filled me with his peace and his love and his spirit. And I felt like I was doing everything right and I didn't understand what was going on. And I was honestly shocked to find myself in the pit of despair all over again, even at the point of crying out to God, praying for him to take me to heaven because I just couldn't live that way anymore. Filled with fear and anxiety about the future, sinking into that pit of hopelessness all over again. A question came to my heart and so I asked the Lord, what lies do I believe about you? And I heard instantly in the spirit, I'll never leave. And I just burst into tears and all the fear and anxiety that had come between me and Jesus evaporated and he filled me with his love and his peace. And I understood that what I was suffering was for the greater good. In our Western individualistic lifestyles, it can be hard to think that way. And as individuals, we are beloved by the Lord. But his true passion is for his bride, of which we are all members, as his royal priesthood. And so from that space, he gave me the strength to endure it, and I received deep peace, knowing that he was with me and that he was going to make a way through. I don't know about you, but I endured tremendous seasons of trial and tribulation for the vast majority of my life that were absolutely crushing. And I just felt called to make this video today to tell you that God loves you. He is with you. He will never leave or abandon you. As he said, I am with you even unto the end of the age. And a lot of us get caught up in rapture fever, just wishing, hoping, praying for the Lord to return. And of course, I want him to as well. But it can be easy to forget that he's not coming back until as many as possibly can be saved are saved our return to his beloved bride, and she has reached her fullness. And in that time, as he said, we will face a lot of trial and tribulation in this world, but to take heart because he has overcome the world. Yet that can still be hard when we're just surviving day-to-day -day life, facing all sorts of trials, tribulations, temptations. And so what the Lord began to teach me to do in that space, that time where he called me into the secret place, into a season of total solitude with him. Once I fully surrendered to that season, let go of the fears the religious system had left me with about being alone with our Lord, and just asked him to guide me. He began to teach me to live by his indwelling life. And in that space, a little practice came to me with three steps that's really simple if you're struggling or suffering right now. The first is to pause, to be still and remember that he is God, to take a few steps back from whatever problems or challenges or suffering you're facing, and to remember that we serve a God who is bigger than it all, and that he has a plan, an eternal plan and purpose for us all to be one with him in his body, his beloved bride, the church, and that if we are called according to that plan and purpose, as Romans 8, 28 says, he will make all those things work together for our good. Just remembering that without our Lord Jesus, nothing was made that was made, and that he can and will bring us the solutions. But when we're spinning out in that fear and anxiety, enmeshed in our problems, and they're swallowing us whole like the enemy wants them to, the first step is to just take that step back. And then the second step is where are we taking a step back into? It's his love to remember how much he loves us. Not just that he saved us, but that he loved us before the foundations of the world when he chose us in him for his glorious eternal purpose, which God 
created us for as a bride for his beloved son to pour his love out into. And his passion is for us, and he's just waiting for us to ask him to, so we can receive more of his life-giving spirit. And so resting in his love, we can just focus on our love for him in our hearts and remember how much we love and adore our Lord. And from that place, that love begins to flow and we can receive and be filled with it to overflowing, which is what I began to experience as I began to receive more and more of him and learn to rely more and more on him. I came to the third step, which is to receive. One, to receive his love until we're overflowing, but also to receive his peace, to receive his spirit as our manna from heaven, as our living waters, the bread of life and the living waters himself poured out upon us at Pentecost, the spiritual blessings that we can all receive from the heavenly places, whether or not we receive anything material in this world, they're always available to us. He is always more available to us. He is limitless. His love, his peace, his joy are endless. And we can always ask him for more and call on him from that place of love. And then we can also receive the answers we may need. Simple solutions can come to us once we're resting in that peace and love that we may not have been able to access when our minds were spinning out in anxiety. A lot of Christians use those verses from the Bible about fear and anxiety, sort of like a legalistic prescription to shame us for feeling those things. But our Lord is endless in his mercy, his compassion, his loving kindness for us. And he understands as he put on flesh and came down and dwelt among us and suffered the greatest trials and tribulation of them all so that we could be near to his heart again. The challenges that this world presents us and that we're struggling with as we learn to trust him, to have deeper faith in him and hope in him no matter what we face, which is what he's inviting us to do when we're in such challenges. And so when we can step back and pause, rest in his love, let our love begin to overflow our hearts, let his love meet it and overflow in us, we can begin to open to the simple solutions he has planned for us, receiving blessings and miracles and the keys that we need to move forward in our season into thriving with him. When I was in that place with him of solitude, he began to give me those solutions and they were so simple and so easy and so effective, things I couldn't see when I was trying to manage life and bend it to my own will, sort of drowning in my own ocean of suffering again, which is a normal thing that happens in this world. But what Jesus offers us is not just salvation, which is a wonderful gift we can all be eternally grateful for that demonstrates his love for us in such a deep and profound way. What he offers us also is rising into new life with him, not just in the next life, but here and now. And so as I was praying for him to take me to heaven, he began to teach me how to experience the heavenly place, the spiritual blessings, and live in that realm, in this world, but not of it. In ways I didn't realize were accessible, I had caught glimpses of them, but they weren't being taught in the religious system where most of us naturally get caught up in trying to please God and live life and obey him by our own willpower. The same one that led us to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden that separated us from God. And what our Lord offers us is his tree of life, he being the tree of life himself, his life-giving spirit. As John said, he gives us life. And the life that John was speaking about in the Greek translation means divine life, eternal life, the same life that God himself lives and thrives by. And he has an endless supply of it available for all of us when we call on him in that place. When we remember to just pause and be still and remember who he is, let our love for him overflow our hearts. And then he gives us the peace and the ease and the freedom to have the patience to wait for his answers to come, to withstand whatever season we may be in, a season of captivity, a season of wilderness, or a season of freedom and abundant overflow. The Lord wants us to live in a sacred union, a communion with him, as he lives in communion with the Father and the Holy Spirit, through which they are one, that we can be one with him and the Father through that same spirit. When we learn how to take that spirit 
as our bread of life, our living waters, and be so filled with his love that our hearts will overflow and burst forth like rivers of living water into this world. And he has taken me to that place and from it, I've created Thrive Academy from a vision he gave me in 2023 where he descended from heaven and his presence was so beautiful. The water was just pouring out of my face as I beheld our glorious Lord. And he asked me, he invited me to help his little ones heal. And I now understand that means helping other believers connect to him in a deeper way to create deep intimacy, to receive more and more and more of him so they too can begin to thrive with Jesus because I can't just keep all this to myself. So Thrive Academy will be opening soon out of my heart like rivers of living water. A chorus has poured forth called The Lord is My Shepherd that's going to help you learn how to live with the Lord, the Holy Spirit, as your true guide to truly follow him as your only head that you may be discipled by him and him alone. And I'm so excited to share it with you all. Whether or not it's for you when you join me there, I'm sending you so much love from the heart of the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ poured out to you, who wants me to tell you that he wants you to have infinite peace, joy in him, to wake up rejoicing every day as I do now. No matter what the day holds, this is the day the Lord has made, and you can rejoice and be glad in it once you learn to receive more and more of his life and live by his indwelling spirit. I pray that you're able to pause and rest with the Lord in his love and receive his solutions, his plans for you. And I also have a free resource down below if you subscribe to my weekly witness email list. You can download the free ebook, Three Simple Steps to Resting in God's Love, which I go into greater detail in that book. And there's an assessment to help you see where you're at. Peace be upon you. His peace he has left us. We just have to claim it. In Jesus' name, amen.